Welcome. Of course, we are in times that are unknown by any of us. I've never been through anything like this, and you probably haven't either. A couple things I just want to remind you of. First of all, God loves us, and he's with us. And he's been through everything. He's conquered everything. He loves us. He's with us. Second thing is that we at Trinity care deeply about you. And so we want to remember that we are a community. The church is people. It's not a building. It's not a place. It's people. And I just encourage you again, as I did in the letter earlier this week, as I did in the, uh, in the video earlier this week, to keep reaching out to each other, make special attempts to, to message each other, to call each other, to uh, even send a card. It's so important that we keep the community of Christ living and vital during this time. I also want to remind you of one other thing, and it's a key thing. Jesus wants us to be salt and light. And that means in every situation, this time with the coronavirus is creating opportunities like never before. Last night, my wife Marie was talking in the street to a young mother in our neighborhood, and she was in, in tears. Uh, she just feels so much anxiety about this. And it provided an opportunity for her to talk about Jesus Christ. We may have many of these kinds of opportunities present themselves to us. Don't forget to be salt and light. We also want to remind you that we at Trinity are trying to put together all kinds of uh, possibilities for ways we might help and serve each other. So if you want to volunteer, please contact me at phil.wagner at trinitywaconia.org or Pastor Unders, unders.davidson at trinitywaconia.org or through the... Uh, to the internet, whatever it might be, call us. Let us know that you want to help. We need people to make phone calls, maybe make cards. We've got all kinds of other possibilities that may exist, and it depends on how many volunteers we have. A couple other things before we get started. Offerings. Of course, the church's finances continue, and we continue to support missions and those kinds of things. You can drop your offering at church. You can... Uh, uh, send it to us in the mail, or you can give online. Just a reminder uh, to keep uh, giving to the Lord. Also, uh, before we get into the message itself, wanted to let you know that we have some supports, worship supports, and uh, personal studies, family studies that you can uh, download. You might even download the PDF before you begin listening to the message. It might be helpful for you as you follow along with the message. Now, Pastor Anders and I had actually talked about maybe shifting the series to a different topic at this time, but then we began to look at some of the things we're going to talk about and realized, oh, this can be very applicable right now. So we're going to leave it as is. We're in the midst of a cross-examine series, and today we're looking at searching my hearing. So why don't we dig into the message, but first let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank and praise you so much that you never abandon us, you never forsake us. You are with us always. You've promised presence, even though we don't have a lot of answers, and we thank you for that. We ask you to be with us now as we hear your word, whether it's in our homes, wherever we might, uh, might be. Uh, we ask you just to encourage us and uh, give us new insights, today especially as we learn how to listen with ears that hear. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now, Jesus would often say when he was preaching, when he was teaching to people, he who has ears, let him hear. He who has ears, let him hear. Now, what did, what did he mean by that? The other day, I walked into uh, our family room. I was going to talk to my wife, and uh, I had my phone, and I was kind of looking at something, and she had her phone, and we both decided, let's put our phones down so that we can truly tune into each other and truly hear each other. He who has ears, let him hear. Is that what Jesus meant by this? Jesus said, some people have ears, but they can't hear. They can't understand the voice of God. 
That's very important that, of course, we listen to God because he has words of life. He has words of truth. He has words of comfort. And especially in this time, he has words of peace and stability and healing and hope. We've talked all along in this series about the way that God gives us a new life, that the old is gone, the new has come. And we've talked about how that means that our hearts are new, our, our desires are for God and for others. We've talked about how our thoughts are new, how, how he renews our thoughts so that we, we, we think about things above instead of all the things in this earth, the things that can kind of overwhelm us in this particular time. And today we talk about new ears, new ears, ears that hear, ears that hear. Now, I was thinking about this. Is it possible for you to be awake and not be listening? I think that'd be very tough, wouldn't it? I mean, we could put earplugs in or we could could deaden the sound or muffle the sound or, or distract ourselves with music or something like that. But it would be really impossible for us to hear during the day when we're awake. Now, what that suggests to us is that when Jesus says that he wants us to have ears that hear, is that he really wants us to pay attention to what he's saying. I mean, there are all kinds of messages out there in the world, aren't there? There are messages that are really good, which come from God, or evil. They come from what we might call the evil triumvirate, which includes Satan and, and sometimes the message of the, of the world uh, uh, or maybe even our, our sinful nature, which is oriented toward self things, things for me. We can listen to the wrong message, can't we? And it's very important even now, every single day, that you be careful about how you are listening, how you are paying attention to what's happening around you. Because there is a good message from God, a message of hope, a message of comfort, a message of peace, truth. And there are lies out there. And there's misinformation out there. And there is all kinds of stuff that that will kind of heighten your anxiety. There are all kinds of things that are that are being said that are true, but they can just make us scared to death. How are you listening? How are you understanding? Remember, Jesus says, he who has ears, let him hear. And he meant, are you paying attention to God? To God who gives life. To God who gives hope. You know, faith and fear are often seen as opposites. When we have faith in God, of course, we have confidence in the one who has defeated sin, death, and the devil. When we're afraid, we lose that confidence, don't we? We lose that focus on on, on Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection, those, those celebrations that are just around the corner for us. Faith comes from God. It's good. It's for our good. Fear comes from the devil. Truth comes from God. Lies come from the devil. In fact, Jesus said very explicitly that Satan is a liar. Order comes from God. Chaos comes from Satan. Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? God's word is the voice of peace, the voice of hope. And we all know that when we have been given these new ears through our baptisms, that God wants us as his people to be able to tune into him and to understand him and to to actually be able to live this new life that he gives us. So what I want to do for for the time we have left is I just kind of want to walk through our our listening and, and what it really means. You see, I would suggest that it has four parts, that it includes preparation, It includes concentration, it includes application, and that it includes action, action. And it's very important for us to pay attention to each one of these so that we might have ears that hear, so that we might have these new ears and use these new ears that God has given us. First, preparation, preparation. How do you get ready to hear the voice of God? 
That might seem like a strange question. Well, I, it's just there, right? Well, but, but, but think about this. When it comes to almost any activity that has value, we almost have to do preparation. If I'm going to play in a, in a game, football or, or tennis or something like that, I'll, I'll warm up, won't I? If I'm going to play golf, I'll take a couple swings. I prepare my body so that I can, when I'm engaging in the activity, do the very best job I can. If I'm going to uh, uh, play a musical piece, I might run a scale or two across the piano. If I'm going to play my trumpet, I might uh, make sure that I'm warmed up before I play. I prepare, don't I? We all prepare. We prepare to hear God as well. How do we do that? How do we do that? We remove the distractions that are around us. We maybe go to a place in our house or a place where we can concentrate better. We quiet ourselves. We pray to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit would be with us as we hear God's word, as we tune in to what God would say so that we might understand, so that we might properly apply, so that we might not just be hearers of the word but doers of the word. We prepare. Preparation, it's so very important, isn't it? Second, concentration, concentration. Are we tuned in when we're actually reading God's word, when we're actually hearing a, a message, when we're, when we're actually praying? Are we concentrating? A couple of stories. In the Old Testament, there was a man by the name of Samuel. Samuel was a prophet. And Samuel was a young boy living with Eli. One night, God reached out to Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel thought it was Eli calling him. And so he ran into Eli's room and he said, what did you want, Eli? And Eli couldn't figure it out at first. And then he realized, well, this is God calling Samuel. And, and so Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. And if you hear this voice again, if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so Samuel went down and he did that. And he, and he listened to the voice of God. And I think that's a very, very important thing to remember that will help us to concentrate. And that's to keep in mind that when you are reading God's word, you are listening to the voice of God himself. You see, God's word stands apart from every other book there is. God's word is Jesus speaking to you. Remember what the Gospel of John says, that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of Jesus. The word of God is Jesus. It's God's voice speaking to you. Let me tell you, when I was young and my father spoke to me, I paid attention because it was dad. And he was right there. And I believed that those words were, were really authoritative for my life. When I read God's word and understand that that's God talking to me, I concentrate a whole lot better. A second story from the Bible. You've heard it before, Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha were going to get a visitor. Jesus was coming to their house. And, of course, Martha was into all of the preparations, and she was getting things ready, and, 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 and Jesus arrived. But Mary didn't stop getting things ready. She didn't stop the preparation part of things, did she? Mary, on the other hand, did. She sat down at Jesus' feet, and she took in the Word of God. She was all ears, wasn't she? What can we do to make it possible for us to be all ears? We can slow down. We can perhaps listen for key words or key phrases or, or phrases that repeat themselves as we're reading the Bible, as we're looking into it. We can take notes. I think that's one of the reasons why these PDFs that we're providing you, these outlines, these family devotions can be helpful. Do you know that studies show that people will remember 40% more of what's told to them in a message or a sermon if they actually are writing something down or taking notes or engaged in some kind of activity that helps them remember? We can review. During the course of this week, you're going to be receiving uh, all kinds of resources for the week. Scripture lessons. The scripture lessons 
or the scripture verses for each day apply to this message. And so what they do is they provide an opportunity for you to review what we've talked about today so that you can be a better hearer of God's word, so that you can take in the truth and the, and the peace and the hope that he's offering so that you don't get caught up in all of the, the, the craziness going on around us. That review, that daily review will be very helpful for you as you day by day read God's word, are reminded of the message that we went through. Pre preparation, concentration, application, application. Now, some people are really good at this, applying what they read in God's word, what they hear from God to their daily lives. Other people, we struggle with it. In fact, study after study shows that what people are looking for most in a sermon, most in a message, is how does it apply to my living? And that's something we always have to be working on. Now, now, let me suggest one thing that's so very important because it'll block any attempt at applying what you're hearing to your living. And that's to begin to think, boy, this would really apply to my kids or this would really apply to my spouse instead of thinking, how does this apply to me? I mean, it's almost like, you know, when you get on an airplane and they tell you if the oxygen mask comes down, that first you put it on yourself and then you offer it to your child. It's, it's the same kind of thing when it comes to application. First, how does it apply to me? And then begin to think more broadly, how does it apply to other people? Psalm 1, verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. That's in reference to people who really have ears to hear. They delight in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. Ask yourself a key question when it comes to application. Why is God saying these words to me right now? What is he teaching me? You know, I believe when it comes to this coronavirus that God is speaking to us as individuals, as the church, and as people in this community, in this world. And he's speaking some very strong messages about what's important, about how we live, about how we interact with each other, and it would be very good for us to tune in to his word to hear what he has to say, to have these new ears to hear what God is speaking. Preparation, concentration, application, and action. Action. Jesus said, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, he said, blessed is the one who reads these words and blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart. There's, a, there's an action, there's a response now, it may feel as though we are almost uh, kind of paralyzed by the social distancing that's been going on right now. Like we can't do anything, and that's just not true. That's, again, the devil speaking a lie to us, that there's nothing that we can do. No, that's not the case. This is a, an opportunity to, to be especially focused on God and, and to start some new habits within your family around Christ and devotions and, and prayer and Scripture reading. This is a great opportunity for us to, to begin to think more about our, our neighbors and connect more in, in again, you know, these social distancing kinds of ways. Jesus told a parable. You've heard me talk about it before. Two kinds of builders. One builds on sand, the other builds on the rock. The storms come to both, but one survives because they built on the rock. And what's his message? He who has ears, let him hear. Don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers also. Be doers also. Everybody's building a life. Storms come. And this is not something that's new to the history of humankind. There have been other pandemics that we've gone through, right? Storms come. Are you building on sand or are you building on the rock? When you build on the rock who is Jesus... You become an active doer of the word. And there are so many creative possibilities for you to be that doer. As I suggested in my opening comments, to stay connected as a community. 
as I said in my opening comments, to start to reach out maybe in new ways to your neighbors, to be salt and light. Pray that the Spirit would help you not just to be a hearer of the word, but a doer. So preparation, concentration, application, and then action. Action. May God bless us to have new ears that are able to hear, understand, take to heart, and to live this life-giving, hope-giving, peace-giving word of Jesus. Amen. Pastor Unders is going to provide our prayer time. But before he does, I'd just like to offer you a couple of song suggestions. And one of them is uh, Rescue by Lauren Daigle. Listen to how she reminds us to hear the voice of God. Another by Mercy Me is called Word of God Speak. Word of God Speak. Pastor Unders? Thank you. Well, welcome again, wherever you might be, whenever you might be viewing this. We want to take a time, too, in, in the midst of this to uh, spend some time in prayer. And so just an encouragement again, our prayer page is on our website there on the online ministries page. There's also an opportunity to, to share more prayer requests and as well as some other needs in your life as we uh, journey through this time. But let's be a community of prayer as we, as we go forward together. So let's pray and I invite you again to join wherever you might be. Father, we uh, come humble in this unique time in our lives. It's like Nothing most of us have ever experienced before, and undoubtedly we have a lot of questions. There's a lot we don't know, but Father, in it all, we know that you are with us. As the writer of Psalms in chapter 46 says, You, God, are our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid. So help us, God, in, into turning toward you in this time, so that you may truly be our refuge, our strength our stronghold. Help us to stand strong in our faith, knowing that you are with us, that you empathize with us in the struggle, the challenges, the, the uneasiness, if you will, that, that settles in, but, but you are not shaken by it. You see beyond this moment in time, and you are, are leading us through it and forward, and, and again, you are that stronghold each day. We realize that we're all impacted by this time uh, in different ways, Father, and we certainly pray that that you would give us peace in the new rhythms of our life right now, but, but especially as we gather, we pray for those who are, are most impacted, for those who are ill right now, whether their illness might be related to, to uh, what's happening or not. We just know it's an uneasy time to be under the weather, to be dealing with, with issues that might put us at risk that, again, just stir more question. We pray for those in the medical field who are caring for patients, for our first responders who are, are out in, in the work of this time, for those whose jobs and financial security are being, being shaken, they're unsure of what lies ahead for our leaders as they navigate. And, and Father, the list goes on and on as we journey through this time. And so we pray that you'd be with them. Give them your peace, your strength, your hope in this time. And truly, Father, we, we pray this for every one of us as well. Help us to be the church. Wherever we might be at this moment, Help us to walk in faith and, and truly to share your love, to hear your words, and to be moved to action. Again, we thank you for your promise of love, your promise to always hear us as we pray to you. And so we come together and we join in the prayer that you have shared with us, the words that you've given to us, and we share them now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, we want to thank you for visiting with us today. I encourage you to check out our online ministry resources, again, on our website. Uh, some of the things that Pastor Phil mentioned, as well as more to come as we journey forward. I want to encourage you to come on back Wednesday night. We'll be sharing a video of encouragement, again, as we journey through this unusual Lenten season, but continue to prepare for Easter and prepare for that great celebration. And lastly, as we go, God bless. I certainly pray his blessings on each of you, your family, those around you, that we would be the church in this time. And that in, again, in the midst of challenges, we would see the opportunities and we would grow through those as he blesses us and sends us out. Have a great day.